they're going to carry on with this task. Nafs and shaitan. Desires, base desires and shaitan. They don't just deviate you. They, they do a, a, a task, they implement a task which is more dangerous than that. More dangerous than taking you off the path. Now this discussion that we're having, it's not a story and folk tales. This is islah, rectification, improvement. If something comes into mind, these are serious points that we're discussing. It's better that before death, I understand and you also understand. Allah Ta'ala is so merciful to every human being. Very merciful, extremely merciful. And Allah's mercy, we don't recognize Allah's mercy and His blessings. Me and you sitting here speaking like this. Is this a minor thing? Sitting here and talking to listen to these messages. Is this a minor thing? We'll realize on that day, at that time, how important this is when we have departed from this world. That's when we'll realize how important these messages are. Death will come, be too late. So think brothers, think this is very serious. Sitting, standing, listening, Allah's shukar. We are sat with an objective, subhanallah. We aren't without an objective here. It may not be Allah Ta'ala don't allow that we gather together without an objective and chit chat and have a chat. May Allah forgive us, prevent us, protect us. That places like that where people sit and gossip, manga, chit chat become like hell, where there's nafs and opinions and nonsense talk and lots of other factors, and you sit down and gather together. May Allah Ta'ala not allow that. Whenever you come, go, go to a place, think and come. Allah's mercy is on me, Allah's blessings on me, um, characteristics or approach. How does he deviate? I don't pray salah. Who's influencing me? Shaitan, nafs. Adhan is being called, I don't listen, I don't take heed. And I'm sat on the corner or stood on the corner having a chit chat. Who's deviating me? Nafs and shaitan. Allah's message we're listening to, we realize that if we don't do this, we shouldn't do this. If we do this, this is the punishment in the grave. Um, we don't follow Allah's orders. Who's influencer? influences us? Say it loudly. Nafs and shaitan. Who else is going to deviate us? Who else? If we're consuming haram, he makes us eat haram. He says, do this action, do that action, lie. He's feeding us haram, taking us towards sood, riba, interest, wrong things. Who is this influencing us? No one else. Just two factors. Who? Nafsan. So Allah Ta'ala has made it clear. Clear that beware. Beware. Your life, you should live a life of caution, O mu'min. Not just freely moving where you want, coming, going, when you want, doing what you want. No. Every breath and footstep should be tread trodden very carefully very carefully you need to think about what you're doing that's why I've told you Allah Ta'ala says that these two are your affirmed vow, avowed enemies they're your avowed enemies because Allah Ta'ala says the person who's got wisdom what will he do with the enemy? say loudly he will save himself from the enemy who? the person who's got akal who's got wisdom intellect if I say this person's your enemy if you say is it? Oh, but uh, your your enemy will loot you, hit you, beat you. If I've got akal, I won't even go near him, shake his hand. I'll try to save myself from him. Because I've been told that he's my enemy. And any time he may entrap me or finish me off. So will I not try to be away from the enemy? So my Mawla, our Lord has told us clearly in the Quran, Allah Ta'ala has defined to us clearly 100%. Nafs and shaitan are your enemies. Allah says, I'm telling you for this reason, because you'll have akal. So you will then try to save yourself from these enemies. If you don't save yourself, then what will you become? You will become deviated, deceived. You will fall into their trap. If you don't save yourself from your enemy, then your enemy will beat you. He will kill you. He will steal from you. Loot you. So we need to save ourselves. We can only be safe at that time. When we save ourselves from them, when we um, enforce the security to protect us from them, Allah says, if you want to come to me full of security and protection and, and free from them, then Allah says, what do you need to do? You need to enforce the protection and security from the shaitan and nafs. Tell me how many brothers, how many people save themselves from nafs and shaitan. Do we think about this? Uh, we're just bopping around all brothers. This life is not just a waste of time. We need to understand the objective of life. We will be severely questioned in the hereafter. Severely questioned. And that's why Allah Ta'ala is trying to forcefully explain to us in some ways that these are your avowed enemies, they're dangerous for you. So why do you want me to be soft to you? When I told you clearly, Allah Ta'ala says, then why weren't you cautious? Why were you living the life of an animal? Is Allah Ta'ala not telling us today? Many times over. So if we want to be safe from these two enemies, nafs and shaitan, what do we need to do? We need to protect ourselves from these factors. 
And that person who will protect himself, save himself, he won't be deviated, he won't be deceived, only that person... So only that person will be saved from Nafsun Shaitan who wants to be saved. Allah will say, Allah has told us, how can you be saved? How can you protect yourself? Allah has clearly explained the solution. If you want to be protected from Nafsun Shaitan, then Allah says, I'll tell you the solution. When I tell you the solution, the person who then tries to practice according to that solution, then that person saves. Say, subhanAllah, subhanAllah. End of story. Easy. Yeah? Clues come out. Clues come out. Nafs and shaitan, to be safe from them. There's one method. One method, my brothers. One method. Yes, that every person in the universe, the Holy Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his sunnas, his, the methods of his sunnas, say subhanallah. Say again, subhanallah. That's the solution. There's only one way. Allah Ta'ala said, if you want to break nafs, if you want to break shaitan, you want to be protected from the trickery of shaitan nafs, there's only one method. What is that? Allah says, implement the methods of the sunnahs of my Habib. That's why Allah says, وَمَن يُطِعْ لَهُ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَزِيمًا وَمَن يُطِعْ لَهُ وَرَسُولُهُ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَزِيمًا Whoever takes hold of my path and my Habib's path is successful. And why is he successful? Because nafs and shaitan deceived you, deviated you, they've passed. If you follow them, if you prostrate to shaitan and nafs, and shaitan and nafs will say that he thought I was the Lord, and he used to worship me and prostrate to me, and bow to me, and I was his destination, and everything, and follow the sunnahs, then you say la to everything else and you succeed. So there are two opposite ways. Allah Ta'ala says that successful is that person, فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا the person who's grabbed out of my orders and implemented the method of who? The sunnahs of my Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَزِيمًا Then impossible, the question doesn't arise that he follows nafs and shaitan. But when his actions are all according to the sunnah, then nafs and shaitan cannot pollute his lifestyle. And the topic, so we need to realize and learn today, who am I? Who are we? Allah's Nabi Sallallahu said, if you want to know, that am I a complete mu'min? Am I a Muslim, right or wrong, good or bad? What's the method? Not that, look at salah, his ibadah, nothing else. Ajeeb, the line has gone to a different direction. If you want to realize, if you're a good mu'min, if I want to know, am I a complete mu'min, a good mu'min, then listen clearly. Listen carefully. The kamil complete mu'min will be that person. Kamil mu'min will be that person who people will say that they will entrust him with their, with what? Ajeeb, azim words. Those people, people in the dunya, who will entrust him with their life and their wealth, they consider that they can entrust him with their life and with their wealth. What a great and beautiful hadith, subhanAllah. Kamil mu'min, the complete mu'min will be that person. Ibadah is not coming to this, another point is coming in. Highest grade point is coming. The Kamil Mumin will be that person who people, people have come in. Which people? The non-believers, the believers, Muslims, everyone. Who people think that they can entrust him with their wealth and with their bodies. They think that he, they can entrust him. Subhanallah. In other words, when people consider me, when they say that this individual is such, that he will never speak bad about me. That the, my body, my life, and my mind, I'm totally uh, at, at, uh, in the form of protection. Doesn't matter what t- type of person he is, from whichever religion he is, he trusts you that he can never give me loss. Yes, that he's halim, he's soft, he's tender, he's beautiful in his characteristics. Nabi al Karim, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's character was totally like this. You can see this, subhanAllah. His words, subhanAllah. He would speak and he would implement. Is this the case? That no non-believer could say that Rasulullah is this and this and this. Everyone had yaqeen that they accepted he was honest. And what did they, why did they not accept him? Because of nafs and shaitan.